Uh, good morning, everyone. Okay, so ASPEC, that information management, it's all about what asset managers and asset owners need to know about their data. So plenty of standards around for design and construction, but there's nothing around for recording. So our focus is on what information to capture at the construction phase to put into your systems, whatever systems they may be. So really, we just want to make it simpler for asset managers and owners. So the focus is twofold. Um, we want to get data, so it doesn't matter where it comes from, whether it's being built by subdivision development or built through capital or minor capital projects or renewal projects, it doesn't matter. What we want to do is leverage off the information systems that you have in-house. So we put it through a GIS. Not to be GIS-centric, it's just that's the best investment that you've made in terms of managing your data, so may as well make some use out of it. And the best way to do that is to use the tools and use the expertise that you've invested in over time to actually grab the data, massage it if you need to, and then incorporate it into your existing data sets. So this is a real whirlwind tour of what ASPEC is all about, but we've been around, this is our 11th year now, so over that time we've been developing data standards based on your requirements. So uh, I work in the industry, I've been in consulting practice now for uh, 20 odd years, actually a bit longer than that. Um, but when we came about this concept, it was what do you need as asset managers to be able to manage your data, to be able to make good decisions? And what it comes back to is uh, we need good data. We need to know that it's complete and accurate. So this program has evolved over time and uh, it comes back from input from industry input from the users, input from the community who service those users. So starting off with one, con uh, one company, one organisation in um, 2002, we've now grown to over 50 uh, across Australia and New Zealand and I'm happy to say that we, we have our first New Zealand um, member and hoping for a lot more. But essentially, when, when I looked at it, um, I don't know if you're aware, but there's a National Growth Areas Alliance in Australia, and what they've done is identified that there are 25 councils in Australia that are targeted for rapid growth. Uh, and we have 15 of those 25 as our members. So that's probably a pretty good indication of the importance of collecting data from the source. Um, we do a lot of liaison with industry, um, directly and indirectly. So when I say indirectly, it's through these organisations that are um, Shara Kalamunda, uh, City of Wellington, City of Wyndham and, and so on, who deal with their asset management vendors. So I, I rarely speak to the vendors unless they have a technical question about what is it that we need to do, what is it we need to know about the standards. And I say to them, there are key components in the standards. There are um, variable components which relate to each asset type and then there are fixed components, for example, data construction. It's a fixed component, so why not include that as part of your core elements and the rest can be configurable? So we have vendors who include probably um, there's about 10 or a dozen fields uh, that go into their data schemas and then the councils that are incorporating the data then know that a lot of it can actually be fed into those schemas and then the other components are configurable. We also have a lot of consultants who register with us, not um, f for no other reason other than to show that they've got some interest. So uh, I reserve the right to spam them with all the propaganda that we, um, that we put out. So when we put on new members or we have an update or we want their input, we'll send them out. So it's, there's no obligation, but it just shows some interest there. But really what we've done is we've set up this collaboration model, which um, is really the essence of ASPEC. It's about our advisory council, which is made up of users and key stakeholders. So you don't have to be a user in my book to be a key stakeholder. You just have to have an interest in that particular theme that we're talking about. But what's really important is you can see on one side we've got software vendors, on the other side we've got consultants. They're all service providers and they're all cross-pollinating as well. So. This has come about from us not preaching to the industry to say you have to do this. It's come about from 
the users saying it makes sense that we put a single process in place that you build your business processes around and that way it doesn't matter whether you're servicing New Zealand, Victoria, Western Australia, Tasmania, it's the same business process. In fact, you just work off the one document. So here's the bigger picture. This is where we are heading. Okay, so really the left-hand side of the screen is uh, unfortunately where still a lot of organisations are at. Um, what we're trying to do is actually drag them kicking and screaming to the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, and that's really when you start leveraging off the information systems that you have in place. You know, the amount of time and effort that you put into implementing an asset management system or a pavement management solution or, or even a GIS, it, you need to be able to get a return on investment from that. And the best way to do it is not to have data entry. So we have a governance model, and this came about because we expanded outside of Victoria. So the beauty of this governance model is you can have input. It doesn't matter whether there's a standard that's published, you can have input. In fact, all the updates that we're doing now as, are as a result of industry consultants telling us, George, this isn't working, you need to change it, or what about including this description? So we have code lists, we have a whole range of activities that um, constitute the data collection process. By the way, I don't sell software, haven't sold any software in the whole time I've been working, um, so I do reserve the right to bag any vendor if they're not doing the right thing. Um, so our entree into New Zealand was through Wellington City Council, and our first process was the three waters. No, no mean feat. Um, and at that point, we only had our stormwater drainage um, module up and running, and that's when I encountered my first hurdle called definitions. I remember sitting in a room with Vaughan and a few other people, I said, oh, we can't accept D-spec, it's, it's no good. I said, why? It's drainage. And I said, no, we can't accept it. I then learnt that drainage in Australia doesn't equal drainage in New Zealand. So we changed our D-spec from drainage standard to stormwater drainage standard, and everyone was happy and we went on about our way. So um, important lessons to learn, and that's why we focus on localising the specifications whenever we move to a new jurisdiction. It doesn't matter if it's a new council in the same area. We've got to make sure that we cover the local terminology. So this is a big screen. There's a lot of writing. Um, what it really means is that we're focusing on these key areas. So these are specific to New Zealand. So we, are, we have built these into every one of our specifications because it's critical that we tie in some enforcement to the receipt of data. You want clearance of your subdivision, well, give us the data. No data, no clearance. You want to sign off on your capital works job, give us the data. No data, no sign off, no pay, uh, no title. Um, that's the big stick. In the 10 years I've been doing it, we've not had to use it once. But it's enough of an incentive to keep people on the move. Uh, Got to be specific. Our specs are really, really detailed. If, you, if you're a technocrat, you'll love our documents. Um, so if you're a software developer, you'll love our documents because we don't not only tell you what the fields are, we tell you how to validate them. So it's a one-stop shop as far as I'm concerned because we want you to be able to pick up a document and say, OK, I don't understand this term, what do you mean, George, rather than I don't understand what validation means. So we've laid it out, plenty of pretty pictures um, to try to give you an example of what we're expecting. So working with Wellington at the moment, this, here's a pretty good example. This is hot off the press dealing with their um, principal uh, business analyst. We're looking at where ASPEC fits into the data governance framework for asset information. And as you can see, the circle at the top of the screen um, is where ASPEC fits in. Um, this one's a little bit busy. I don't expect you to, to look at any of the detail other than the blue circles down the bottom because that's what I want to focus on. So a fairly in-depth process dealing with asset creation, you know, the receipt of as-built information. But what's really critical is right down at the bottom when we're talking about tools, even though we're not software, it is a tool. Data is an asset. You need to value the importance of your data. If you don't have it, you can't make a decision. So what's it worth to you to be able to make a good decision? 
Um, so you need to recognise the importance of data. And so, RSpec, which is what we're looking to um, customise next for New Zealand requirements. RSpec, assets within the road reserve, so property line to property line. So we have a theme. Uh, every one of our specs has a theme structure. So this is what you can expect in our spec. Um, it is already published in Australia. What we're now looking to do is to localise it, as I mentioned. So we look at bridges. You know, that it's not one of your most modern day looking bridges, but it gets the message across of the type of information that we want to collect. And the same with culverts. You know, we classify major culverts. In our stormwater drainage, we also cover culverts, but obviously much smaller dimensions. So uh, in my world, talk's cheap, so I actually want to show you some of the data. Now, we're vendor agnostic, so um, it doesn't really matter what software package you're using. I just happen to use MapInfo, because that's what's on my laptop. But this is data that we're actually receiving now from consultants. Um, minus the colours. I, I added the colours for a bit of effect, just to differentiate some of the information. Okay, so simple enough, we have some centre lines, we have some polygons, we have some point symbols. So, in GIS speak, we use three common features, a line, a polygon, or a point. Uh, we don't want to mix it up, it's, it's really that simple. The rest of it is, what attributes are we storing? So. Um, so a lot of the data is stored for roads, for example, and paths on the centre line because people are still using the centre line paradigm. So what we're trying to do is encourage them to use the polygon paradigm, which is look at the whole area. And now that there's a, I don't know what it's like in um, uh, here in New Zealand at the moment, but in Australia everything is about valuing land under roads, and you can't do that with a centre line. Uh, you can do that with a polygon, which shows where the pavement goes. As I said, this is real data. This came from a land development consultant picking up this subdivision. This data was entered by the consultant. We want the consulting industry to verify that what's been given to us has been built. Um, we're not going to tell them how to do that. They know how to do that. What we're going to do is audit the results. So you're moving away from a data entry position to managing the quality of your data. So you're focusing on completeness and you're focusing on accuracy. Um, and because we're using the GIS environment for our spatial referencing system, it enables us to drop this data straight into a proposed subdivision or a newly created subdivision to see exactly where it sits. And then what we're focusing on is the location of the assets rather than what the asset is. So in this case, We've got all the information there about what is in that um, uh, road pavement. This is the basic information that we've stored about signs. So depending on the kind of asset, we will store a lot of information or we'll store some information. It's all relevant to the asset that you're collecting. So if we're focusing on financial asset management versus physical asset management, we're walking a fine line between the two because at the end of the day, we need to physically manage our assets. Um, so all of the other features, uh, some of them have attributes, some of them don't. So we put in things like the crossovers for driveways. Do we need to know much about that? No, we just need to know that they're there. Do we need to know um, what we have in a roundabout? Yes, we do. So we want to find out more information. So our specs um, have that level of detail in there. So that's it. So I'll just leave you with that little saying. So um, thanks very much for your attention and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks.